Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. I haven't checked out a lot of B250 chips at motherboards based on Intel's latest mainstream KB Lake platform, just one from ASRock. You can check it out at the right top corner by clicking on the card link. So today I've decided to check out one interesting sample from Gigabyte, a more value oriented but still decently feature packed model called the B250M Gaming 3. On the product box itself you won't find a lot of information except your usual specifications overview and some of the features pointed out. While opening it up there's not that much to see besides the common stuff like two SATA cables, user manuals and optical disc with drivers and software and an IO shield and of course the motherboard itself. This model actually design wise reminds me a lot of my former Z97 MX Gaming 5 motherboard. It also has this dark brownish looking PCB with red and black details on the board in a form of the passive heatsink for the VRM, chipset cooling and some other parts. Just as that model this one is also based on a micro ATX form factor which you could probably pick up right away as it looks quite smaller compared to a standard ATX model. Being a B250 chipset based motherboard you'll be restricted in terms of some features seen on the highest tier chipsets like on the Z271s and before all by that I mean you won't be able to do any CPU overclocking so be sure not to put a K unlocked SKU onto this model unless you plan to upgrade your motherboard down the line. That said the power design and its cooling is pretty modest as you can see by taking a look around the socket. For connecting your permanent storage, SSDs and hard drives you'll get a total of 6 SATA 3 ports, 4 of them set in the middle on the right outer edge of the motherboard next to the USB 3.0 header, while the other two are a bit separated in the bottom right corner. You'll also get a single M.2 slot, just above the first PCI Express slot and below the CPU socket, with bandwidth capabilities of up to 32 gigabit per second. For volatile memory support you'll get 4 DDR4M slots with support for up to 2400 MB hertz kits using the XMP profile. Although the product box is all kinds of glowy and RGB looking, the motherboard itself doesn't actually hold a lot of them. You can only see few around the main PCI Express X16 slot and they can be set up choosing few different glowing effects. Speaking of the PCI Express slots, their configuration consists out of two physical X16 slots with electrical X16 X4 configuration and with them you can only do a two-way GPU AMD crossfire configuration, while beside those two we have two more PCI Express X16 X1 3.0 slots. Moving further along the motherboard you'll find a total of 4 fan headers scattered around it, 1 CPU and 3 system fan headers with support for automatic detection of the connected device and capable of delivering up to 2 amps with overcurrent protection together with your USB 3.0, 2.0, TPM, sound and front panel headers as well as your common 24 pin ATX and 8 pin EPS motherboard power connectors. Audio circuitry is a bit underwhelming, supporting Realtake's now pretty dated ALC892 codec together with Camicon gold caps and AMI shielding with your nowadays common LED trace path lighting, so overall nothing too spectacular. Back I.O. is pretty modest too, again as expected for this price point, with a couple of regular USB 2.0 ports, combo PS2 port, DVI-D, HDMI and even a VGA video output, 4 USB 3.0 ports, Intel gigabit LAN port and 7.1 analog audio port configuration. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product or if you want to leave your suggestions and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line or you can just check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!